Hey, it's your guy Tyrell back with the interviews. In today's video, we're going to briefly analyze the main tactical themes in Everton's 2-1 win over Arsenal. So in today's video, first we're going to focus on Arsenal's attacking shape, then we'll shift to how Rafa Benitez wanted his side to defend against Arsenal, and lastly we'll shift to Arteta and Benitez's adjustments in that second half. So when we break down the game and we do look at the board, we have Arsenal in a 4-2-3-1 and Everton in a 4-4-1-1. So when we look at Arsenal starting 11, what you notice is that Lacazette that is up front ahead of Odegaard, and out in those wider areas, it's Saka and Martinelli. Granite Jaka did return to the starting 11, and he was placed with Thomas Partey in that midfield zone, and we did witness Tierney starting from left back instead of Nuno Tavares. Everton themselves were in a 4-4-1-1, and without Calvert-Lewin, they had Richarlson up front with Townsend just in behind him. And from the get-go, you knew how Everton would approach this defensively. They dropped off into two banks of four, but what was most important here was that they did have a hexagonal shape in and around Thomas Partey and Xhaka. That did witness some modification from Arsenal's overall attacking shape, as it was a 3-2-5. And the focus was on Tierney to push forward down the left-hand side into advanced positions. We witnessed Martinelli shifting centrally laterally into that gap between Coleman and Mina, and at times in between Mina and Keane. The reason why was that Lacazette was often dropping deeper into that pocket of space between the lines and between Decore and Alan. So that's where you would see Martinelli often occupying that front line. In terms of Odegaard, he was dropping into that gap between Decore and Gray, and when Gray and Gordon swapped, it was still in that zone, but Gordon was on that side. But what you ended up seeing as well was that he was shifting out to the outside near the touchline to receive the ball to help Arsenal bypass that press. There were times throughout the game where Arsenal did look like a 4-1-5 as Jaka was dropping into that inside left position to provide protection for Tierney bombing into advanced positions. It was also to try and attract Gordon towards the ball. There were several occasions where you had Jaka sliding the ball out to Tierney and that would place him in a 1v1 with Coleman. But for large spells of that game, he struggled to get the better of the Everton right back. If Xhaka wasn't playing those passes, there were occasions where he witnessed Odegaard in deeper midfield positions, switching the ball across Gordon, or times over Gordon, to allow Tierney to bomb forward down that flank. In terms of Everton's shape in general, it didn't really trouble Arsenal, but the issue that Arsenal had was in the final third. Like I said, down the left-hand side, Tierney was getting into those 1v1s, but he rarely had an impact against Coleman, and perhaps that's where you need Martinelli to shift laterally into that zone and attempt some combination plays, along with Lacazette, who was initially dropping off into that deeper zone. But in that case, you need Odegaard and Saka to drift centrally into advanced positions to serve as an attacking option in the penalty area. Lacazette's role was odd in general because, yes, he was doing a good job of receiving the ball between the lines, and it was impactful in terms of Arsenal scoring. But for the most part, there were times where Tierney had the ball and you simply needed Lacazette in advanced positions occupying the center backs and then having Martinelli potentially make runs towards the front post to pull out Mina. Or if that wasn't the case, have Lacazette looking to spin across Keane and then have Martinelli making those runs in between the center backs. Here you see Xhaka sliding the ball into Lacazette in that gap between Decore and Gordon and focus on Odegaard free in between Alan and Gray. When Lacazette receives the ball, he instantly slides it out to Tierney ahead of Coleman due to Decore's pressure. And what you end up seeing is that when Tierney receives the ball, he's placed in a 1v1 and once again, no one is tracking the movement of Odegaard. You could see that Martinelli is making a run centrally towards the center backs. And as that play develops, Tierney carries the ball towards the byline. And what's important here is Martinelli's run as he does take away Keane. And you can see that Holgate is anticipating the delivery at the front post. But because neither Alan, Gray, or even Coleman step out to Odegaard, Tierney is able to pick out the attacking midfielder. And from that position, he's free to side foot volley a first time effort beyond Pickford. The decision to have Richarlson and Townsend between Thomas Partey was equally unsuccessful, as on several occasions, Thomas Partey was able to locate Lacazette or Odegaard between the lines and the gaps between the midfield bank. But unfortunately for Arsenal, when they received the ball in those zones, Lacazette failed to provide a consistent threat against the center backs. And it was Odegaard who had the most impact for Arsenal by dropping into that gap between Decore and the left-sided Everton player, or shifting on the outside to receive the ball beyond the press to serve as a creative outlet. Here's an example of Arsenal bypassing the Everton press as Tomiyasu receives the ball from White and focus on Odegaard's lateral movement in towards the right channel. 
when Odegaard receives the ball, now the entire Everton midfield bank is taken out of the game. And as that play develops, he runs into Everton's half and he locates the run of Martinelli across Coleman. And as he approaches the back four, he slides the ball across Godfrey and Keane for Martinelli's run between Holgate and Coleman. And from there, this should place Martinelli in a 1v1 to kill off the game. However, his first touch guides him out wide and Pickford does deserve credit for coming off his line to force him there. And from that position, Pickford has forced Martinelli in towards a tough angle, and that forces Martinelli to take another touch towards the byline. And as you can see, the only pullback options for him is Lacazette and Tierney making late runs in towards the box. And unfortunately for Arsenal fans, Martinelli ends up clipping the ball on top of the netting. Meanwhile, when we focus on the right-hand side, this is probably the most frustrating thing with Arsenal's attacking approach to begin with. You have Tomiyasu receiving the ball in a narrow position and Saka hugging the touchline, but when Saka receives the ball, he often drags away Gray and Godfrey due to the fact that Tomiyasu isn't looking to push forward. Here, there were occasions where you witnessed Tomiyasu making those underlapping runs so that Saka could bypass Godfrey, but in those positions when he did get into that zone, he wasn't looking up to see if there were any Arsenal runners in the penalty area where there often wasn't, and in those cases, you need Tomiyasu to retain possession and look to drop it back to Saka so that Arsenal can continue their play and perhaps have Odegaard shift across to create 3v2s or 3v3 battles. Initially, we witnessed Saka receiving the ball from White ahead of Godfrey, and you have the underlapping run from Tomiyasu, and you should be witnessing Odegaard making a run off Alan into space behind Keane because neither Keane or Alan are tracking his movement. Saka does a very good job of playing the ball across Godfrey and that does pull out Tomiyasu and Keane. And from there, Odegaard has another opportunity to make that run in between the midfield gap into vacant space in that right half space zone. That's what you should be expecting from the attacking midfielder, but he doesn't make that run. And what you end up witnessing from Tomiyasu is that he's looking to play a first time ball into that zone where he should be keeping his head up to identify the fact that Odegaard didn't make that run so he could retain possession and potentially drop it back to Saka. He doesn't do that and he fires a first time ball through the six yard box that falls into Pickford. If we shift to the second half, it's Saka ahead of Godfrey and you could see Tomiyasu make an underlapping run to drag away Keane into right half space. But when Saka looks to play the ball across the Everton left back, focus on Tomiyasu. There's no Arsenal players in the box, and this is where you need the right back to retain possession and potentially drop it back to Saka. But instead, he looks to play a first time ball through that penalty area, and it's an easy clearance for Holgate. At the same time, Odegaard should be looking to make runs into that half space as well, as the wide players were taking out of the game and Alan and Decore weren't looking to track that movement. And it would simply pull out Keane and create more space for lack. Lacazette and Martinelli, and if on the rare occasion Gray or Gordon weren't tracking the movement of Tomiyasu, then that would mean that Keane would be forced to shift out into that zone, and that creates a free avenue for Odegaard to receive the ball in right half space to serve as a goal threat or as a creative outlet for Martinelli or Lacazette breaking into the box. In reality, the best case scenario for Arsenal is that if Tomiyasu isn't making those underlapping runs, he could hold a narrow position and what you need from Saka is to hug the touchline, drag away markers, and have Odegaard consistently making those runs into the right half space to receive the ball. Now focus on the action on Arsenal's right side. You have Saka dragging away Godfrey and Alan, but Odegaard's positioning is key here. He makes that forward vertical run into right half space, and that does create enough space for Saka to place the ball onto his right foot, and look at his options in the penalty area. You have Alakazette occupying Holgate, and Nketiah prepared to make a run off Coleman who's ball watching. Saka locates that threat and he clips the ball into the 6 yard box over Coleman for Nketiah free in the 6 yard area, and because Gordon's focused on Tavares, you should be seeing Nketiah putting Arsenal ahead from this position, but unfortunately for Arteta and Arsenal fans, he nods a free header off the post. If that isn't the case, and Saka looks to square it to Tomiyasu or Odegaard, then that's where you need Saka to continue his run off Godfrey in behind to force Keane to shift over or simply have a free running lane to receive the ball in behind the Everton back line. Initially, we could see Saka receiving the ball from Tomiyasu and pulling away Godfrey, but focus on the positioning of Tomiyasu and Odegaard. 
Saka does well to evade the challenge from the left back. And from there, he's looking to square the ball across Alan to find Odegaard free ahead of Keane. What happens next is Odegaard instantly drops the ball off to Tomiyasu. And what's important here is the movement of Saka. Rather than standing still on that right touch line, he looks to make a run off Godfrey who's simply not aware of his movement. As that play develops, what you end up seeing is that Tomiyasu is aware of that Saka run, and from there Saka does well to bend across Godfrey into the gap between the left back and Keane, and from there we witness a rare Arsenal attacking move, as Tomiyasu clips the ball over Alan and Keane for Saka's run, but unfortunately for Arteta and Arsenal fans, that pass is slightly over hit, but ultimately it's the right idea and the combination that you need to witness from Arsenal's right side. In terms of Arsenal's pressing, there was no no real issue from them from a defensive aspect as a unit. Lacazette would be in charge of pressing the center backs and if Odegaard did look to shift out to Keane per se, he was blocking off the passing lane into Alan on a consistent basis and that would see Martinelli and Saka stepping to Coleman and Godfrey. In that midfield zone, it technically should be Xhaka and Thomas Partey stepping to Decore and Alan. What we ended up seeing was that Xhaka was stepping out to Decore and Thomas Partey was holding the center of the pitch. With Odegaard blocking off the passing lane into Alan, you didn't need Thomas Partey to step out into that zone. But there were occasions where you ended up witnessing Lacazette and Odegaard stepping to Keane and Mina. And you would see Thomas Partey and Xhaka stepping to both Decore and Alan. And then you'd have one of the Arsenal center backs stepping towards Townsend to close him down. If Arsenal weren't looking to press higher up the pitch, what we often saw was that they would drop off into two banks of four. And the same would apply. Odegaard and Lacazette would be sitting in between Alan, but there were times where he was looking to drop in between the center backs to help push the fullbacks forward but even in that situation Lacazette and Odegaard weren't tempted to step to Alan due to the fact that his passing range is limited and in those situations you would still end up seeing the Kure being picked up by Thomas Partey or Xhaka and the other holding the center of the pitch in case Townsend dropped off into that central area, or they would simply just be holding that position and have White or Gabrielle deal with Townsend. So in that case, when you could see that Arsenal weren't really troubled by Everton's attacking approach, you have to question where they went wrong defensively. Well, first it wasn't down to Benitez's substitutions. We did see Holgate enter the game for an injured Mina, and that was instantly a like-for-like -like change. And we also ended up witnessing Townsend being replaced by Andre Gomes that did see Everton shift to a 4-1-4-1 with Alan protecting the back line, and then Decore and Andre Gomes would look to push forward, but that overall shape didn't necessarily help Everton get back into the game. What we witnessed from Arsenal was that they were forced to also take off Tierney due to injury for Nuno Tavares, and he didn't impact the game from that left-back zone. And in terms of Arteta's other substitution, he brought on Nketia for Martinelli, and Lacazette was replaced by Aubameyang. Now, when you question those substitutions, you question why Nketiah would start from the left, but he pretty much occupied a similar role to Martinelli and frankly did a better job in terms of running at the Everton backline and shifting centrally to receive the ball between the lines and help improve Arsenal's overall build-up play. In the final minutes of that game, you witness Nketiah making a run in between Coleman and Iwobi to break into the final third. And as he carries the ball towards the Everton penalty area, you have Gabriel in between Godfrey and Key and Aubameyang making a run towards the back post. What Gabriel does well here is that he takes away both the Everton center back and left back and dummies the ball so that it falls into the path of Aubameyang free and right half space. But even from this position with Godfrey desperately sliding across, Aubameyang slides his effort across the goal and wide of the net. Aubameyang wasn't eager to drop off between the lines as Lacazette. So now what you ended up seeing was that if Nketiah was shifting into those central areas, he'd pull away Holgate. Aubameyang would pull Keane towards him, and then because no one was picking up Odegaard in that pocket of space between Alan and the left-sided shuttler or the left-sided attacking player, Odegaard was now free to receive the ball in that gap as Godfrey was focused on Saka, and that helped Odegaard get into advanced positions in the final third. Here we witness Nketiah's impact as he makes a forward run into left half space and drags away three Everton defenders, but as he looks to play the pullback across the box, you could see that Lacazette drags away Alan with his vertical run, and that creates space for Odegaard free at the edge of the box. 
you can see that there's a 2v1 with Sokka ahead of Godfrey, but because the pass is slightly behind Odegaard, it forces him to readjust his positioning, and it gives Godfrey the ability to shift over towards him, and that's how he's able to block Odegaard's first time effort towards goal. So in the final stages, you witness Thomas Partey splitting Alan and Andre Gomes to find Nketiah between the lines, but here you also see Odegaard in between the lines and Aubameyang occupying the center backs. When Nketiah receives the ball, he does pull out Holgate, and as you can see, Odegaard is free in between the lines ahead of the back four. Nketiah slides the ball to Odegaard, and from here he's closed down by Godfrey and Keane, and he's placed in a legitimate goal scoring position. But what he does well is that he cuts across Keane, and when he does that, look at the position that he's in. You've got four Everton players around him with two capable of blocking his effort, and Odegaard should score from that position, but Coleman makes a vital block. Therefore, when you break down Arsenal's downfalls, it's simply down to defensive mistakes. The first one you witness Thomas Partey and Nuno Tavares doing a very poor job of dealing with the throw-in, and that allows Decore to nod the ball into Richarlson. While Arsenal do a good job of recovering from that mistake, look at how Gray is able to cut in on three Arsenal players due to the overlapping run of Andre Gomes. But look at the far post. You can see that Arsenal do their best to close down the shooting option, and perhaps the only issue here is that Xhaka isn't stepping a tad bit forward. But you have Nuno Tavares ball watching, and you have Richarlson and Gordon free at the back post. The issue here is that when that shot is delivered on goal, Nuno Tavares is ball watching, and Richarlson's looking to make a run towards the six yard box so that when the ball does bounce off the bar, he's in the ideal position to nod the rebound over Ramsdale. And the second goal, White's forward run and ball into a bomb yang places him out of position, and Alan simply slides the ball across him to place Andre Gomes free. The issue that Arsenal encounter here is that when Xhaka looks to step across, he can't foul him as he's already booked, so he lets Andre Gomes slalom beyond him. Neither White nor Xhaka are able to close down or hold up his run, so he's able to slide the ball out to Gray to run at Tomiyasu. But even in that position, you can see that Decore is looking to make the overlapping run so that Gray can cut across Tomiyasu, but you still have White and Xhaka recovering their position to close down the run of Gray. Arsenal have 3v2 in the penalty area, and from that standpoint, you'd prefer Gray slide the ball square to Andre Gomes. However, as that play continues, you could see that White steps towards Gray, but Xhaka oddly retreats towards his own penalty area, even though he has 3v2 in that zone, where he should be stepping forward to help close down that shooting lane. As you could see, when Gray is able to cut across White, if Xhaka simply steps forward, he blocks off that shooting lane as he's within close proximity of White to begin with, and that simply forces the ball out to Gomes, and you prefer Gomes take the shot or at least retain possession rather than Gray shooting from that zone, and from there Gray is able to fire a superb effort beyond Ramsdale. So as you could see, a combination of poor execution in the final third and basic defensive mistakes resulted in more drop points for an Arsenal side that were placed in a comfortable position to claim all three.